So the next day, and still there, all untouched, and we're gonna unbag everything. All right, the bit everyone loves, demolding. Now I've lost all my wedges because I haven't found them in the new workshop yet. So we're going to use a screwdriver and a old propeller because I like to break propellers. Good cracking noises. Beautiful. That's nice and bright. Look at that. All right. Now we have some trimming to do, but that's not a bad fuselage. Shame it. And we have a nice shiny fuselage. Unfortunately, the paint hasn't stuck in some areas, and you can see there's some bubbling underneath here where the paint hasn't stuck as well. So not super thrilled about that. Also, uh, along the top, on the seam. It hasn't stuck either. Bugger. Otherwise, that's composites for you. Otherwise, it would have been a beautiful fuselage. We don't want to pull the skins out of the moulds yet, so we're going to be really careful when taking off the release film. Compo fix does come off nice and easily, though. One of the things I love about it. Let's drop back on itself. That excess resin there, which has come out with the part. Not too much into the breather, so we haven't used an excess of resin, which is nice. Have a look at the part. You see we've got a nice textured surface to glue onto. Not too much trimming to do around the part either. Uh, I also want to keep this bag to reuse again because I've got to glue down the cores on this as well. So. More excess resin than this combo flex. So the next step's going to be put a little bit of cleaning up around the leading edge of that overlap of some of the fabric that goes over there. I'm going to clean up that. Another location there. Otherwise, it's pretty good. You can see where I've put the reinforcing patches for that. It's reinforcing around where the wing bolts are going to go through. So there's more layers of fabric in that location. And same at the back here as well. Um, so the bags will perform nicely under there with that uni toe I chucked in there. Um, nice textured, a nicely textured surface from the CompoFlex. So yeah, a bit of trimming at the stage. And then it's going to be putting in some foam um, into the wing. Now I'm going to start prepping for adding some foam cores. Now I didn't have a large sheet of blue foam left anymore, I only had some small pieces, so I'm going to have to join this together with lots of small pieces. So bear with me for that, but at least you're about to see what I'm doing. Um, so what I've done here is I have beveled the leading edge slightly because it helps it go into the leading edge at the front there. Uh, the vacuum will suck the rest of that down and conform that to the shape. Um, but I want good adhesion of my glue. So I made this board which involves a lot of screws And what I do is I perforate the surface to allow good adhesion with the glue. So I literally just go over it And like a stamp go Over the whole thing And add lots of perforations to allow the glue to really anchor this to the skin so we don't get any delamination. And you see we end up with this really sort of nasty looking surface now, but that will allow the glue to stick to it and will help glue that to this inner skin. So now I've got enough blue foam there to make a solid core. So I have beveled all the edges and attacked them all with some, some holes. Next step is 
and all these bits to apply some glue and then chuck it back in the bag. Now, I am going to use a glue which is not available in New Zealand. It is white Gorilla Glue. Um, I find it great. It goes off. It goes off much quicker than normal Gorilla Glue. Um, although normal Gorilla Glue would be quite good for this purpose. Um, yeah, I really like it. So what I did was I smeared that glue all over the surface of the um, of the skins, and once I finished smearing that on, I then laid on the cores and positioned those. I'm actually leaving a slight gap between the core and the leading edge because I'm going to fill that with um, a structural adhesive to join the leading edges together. I don't really want to join that with foam. Um, yeah, now I'm just sucking it down. And you can see the glue is expanding, filling all those voids between. Between it's coming up between the cores as well. So it's going to fill up those gaps between those cores, hopefully. In there as well. And I've also got the tail plane here, the cores under bag. Same process. So they're the easiest bits to do. So I did those at last because the rest of it was quite stressful. Because that white gorilla glue does not give you very long in working time. So I wouldn't recommend using that. For uh, first timers, definitely use the brown Gorilla Glue, the premium stuff, whatever they call it. Um, it gives you a lot longer working time. However, this does seem to be working. The glue has expanded up through the gaps. You can see it expanding out underneath the leading edge there. Example there. Yeah. And now we have them debagged. So those foam blanks are vacuumed nicely into those skins. Same with the main wings over here. Probably vacuumed in. So the next step we have to do is to grab this hot wire bow over here and we're gonna put some current through that via some alligator clips and a battery and we're gonna hot wire these cores flush with the mold plan. All those pinholes that I have put in to help bond the foam in, I've done them a little bit large and what's happened is the glue's come in and all these high points of glue have then made a very rough finish on the hot wiring. I think a bit of um, a sand can't fix, a little bit of a sand and then when we do everything else that will get filled and you will never see that in the final product, that's only internals. Now with a little bit of a sand, things have come up even nicer. So I run my hand across there and we have a much nicer finish. Um, what I've tried to do along the leading edge is keep about a three mil gap to allow for um, some a proper epoxy structural adhesive to join the skins together because I don't want to be using the Gorilla Glue that joins the foam together, polyurethane glue. Um, to join the skins together. I actually want a proper bond at the leading edge um, so that it doesn't delaminate. So now what I do after I've done all that is I'll go and run my ruler across and double check how my heights are looking to make sure that we haven't got any major irregularities or high spots. So what I'm doing now is I am marking out where I'm going to put some channels in the wing. Um, these channels will be filled with a structural adhesive. Um, that's what I was saying, because when you get like a trailing edge like this, you want to be able to have something which joins the bottom skin to the top skin. Otherwise, 
they can delaminate off the foam and then you don't get any support. So by joining the top and bottom skin, it means they can't delaminate and you make your control surface much more rigid. What I'm gonna use is my, I've got a, an old shitty soldering iron, which I'm gonna to use to make the channels. Not quite hot enough at the moment. I might go to a four cell. I think the four cell will be better. You'll see now we have some channels in the foam that go through to the Kevlar on this side and through the wing here. So these channels will get filled with glue and create a basically a subspar for the trailing edge of the wing. So the hinge will be between these two so that the skin is supported either side of the hinge line. Now I've also cleared some foam away where there's going to be some hard points where the bolts are going to go through. So they'll get filled with a Techni glue as well. So then I can drill one through and countersunk into those points, countersink into those points. I'm also just doing a double check here by closing the mold halves together and making sure that they are sitting flush and there's no big things which I'm missing which is holding things up but they're all sitting pretty flush so I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> 